Well, hi folks, Andy Fion here from Rambles with Robin and Ruby. Just wanted to take a few minutes to set the scene for the travel in summer 2020. There were four destinations that we wanted to get to. One was to look at Arctic disjunct plant that occur along the North Shore of Lake Superior. These are Arctic plants that occur around Lake Superior that are several hundred to maybe a thousand kilometers away from their normal Arctic habitat and there's a reason why they occur around Lake Superior. Then we'll have a look and talk more about why they occur in the Lake Superior area. There were three destinations in the Lake Superior area. One was uh, Puckasaw National Park, the other was close to Lake Superior, or actually right along Lake Superior coast. The third one was uh, Gravel River area, west of uh, Bay's Platte, but uh, east of, uh, of Nipigon, Ontario. Those were the three destinations that uh, we were looking for to have a look at some of the Arctic disjunct plants. The second destination was the Abitibi Canyon Fraserdale area. Now this is a road that uh, occurs in northeastern Ontario. There are a number of uh, hydro generating stations that are located along the Abitibi and the Montagany rivers and we wanted to get there in latish spring for geographic area again to see what plants were actually flowering and on what geological substrate. I was hoping that uh, we would get close enough to the James Bay lowland to actually see some of the low lowland rock and failing that at least to look at some of the glacial deposits that support some of the plants that occur in this odd transition between northern boreal forest, James Bay lowland. The third destination was the Detour Mine Highway. This is a, a part of northeastern Ontario that I've never seen before and wanted to at least to see in um, certain areas uh, what boreal plants were flowering. Uh, at this sort of first two weeks uh, in June. The third destination that uh, we wanted to visit were some of the sand plains around Esker Lakes Provincial Park and on Highway 101 between the Quebec border and Matheson. This is kind of a neat area. There's lots of sand. Uh, the Monroe Esker uh, passes through that area. There are uh, a couple of old mines in the area that give you access to some of the, some of the bush back off uh, Highway 101, you're in more deeper bush uh, than, than would be possible if you were just driving the highway. And the final destination was um, an old mining area in the town of Cobalt. Calcite and dolomite were common minerals that occurred in the silver veins. And in previous visits to the Cobalt area, I had come across some uh, calciculus plants. So these are plants that thrive or tolerate a substrate that is rich in calcite. So it was kind of unusual. It was a little bit unexpected. I wanted to go back to one of these sites to see if there was a closer obvious association with the mineral calcite, whether as a, a waste rock or alternatively, uh, whether the calcite rich environment was undergoing weathering in the natural environment because of reacting with uh, the atmosphere and to see if that was uh, one possible explanation to account for the calciculous plants that uh, occur in the area. So those were the uh, destinations this past summer. The intent was to go uh, to be there in early spring. Early spring is a relative term. Early spring adjacent to Lake Superior is quite different from early spring in the Ottawa area. Timing of travel was uh, selected to get there early enough to see some of the Arctic plants in bloom. And then as we went further north, in theory, you're going back in, in, uh, in time. So I hope that you enjoy the videos that follow to give you a perspective of parts of Ontario that many people will never get to see.